All right, what's up, everybody? Hopefully you can hear me. We're going to go ahead and get started on some crabs tonight. This is our last crabs of the fall for me. Get everything fired up and ready to roll. What's what I'm doing? Yeah. I'm recording right there. I'll edit you out. <laughs> How did it all get worked out? Yeah, she sent me a picture of like, I think she did it for me. That's awesome. That would be good. And so send it into school. Nice. I think so. I think that's the, the thing to do, right? Maybe a toy. She likes toys. You know? Oh. All right, so I'm just gonna get everything kind of set up here right now. Just turn on the pot and getting that rolling. Then I'll turn the camera around and start showing you the crabs I got. I got them from a local waterman here. I actually dropped them off at my house. So I turn on my burner. You can see it sounds like a jet engine. Turn it all the way up. And then get my lid on top of there. Then we'll turn the camera around and take a look at these crabs. Sorry about that. All right, so this is the bushel of crabs I got here. While we let this kind of steam up, I'll go through it for you. You can see I got a mixture of Old Bay, actually J.O., we don't use Old Bay, but a mixture of J.O., some water, and some apple cider vinegar. Buy that big old pack of it. All right, so let's go through these crabs and we'll start getting them in our um, bushel basket over there too. My little stand right there, high tech stuff right there. All right, good look down. We got a little escapee. So these are straight number ones down here in Southern Maryland. I normally don't do anything other than ones or twos, and sometimes they'll do jumbos and stuff like that but most of the crabs are just sort of number ones and number twos so you get you know some that are this is about a five and three quarter number one but then there's some true monsters in here too that are a lot bigger and so i put them in and i layer them as i go i'll kind of show you this way i put them in and layer them as i go down there but as i'm going through them i'll put spice on top and i'll show a few big ones here's a nice one yeah, it's closer to closer to six and a half inches there. That's a real nice crab. Make sure as I'm doing this, if you have any questions, if you're watching, go ahead and drop a comment. I'll try to respond to it as I'm doing it. So here's a great tip here. So I got these from a local waterman. I know him well. Um, and I know he probably caught these over the weekend. So right here, this crab with its mouth wide open like that, you know, it's got not much, you know, rebounding in its claws you can see just how floppy it is that right there is a dead crab unfortunately so i'm gonna have to go ahead and not cook that one even though you can see it was a nice heavy crab it would have been full of meat but not nearly worth that that risk i'm gonna go grab the seasoning real quick get 
that shot centered a little more for you. There you go. Now, since I'm picking these crabs, I go a little bit, a little bit lighter on the seasoning. Not like super light, but a little bit lighter. Got a few running away. I got a real big one in my hand right here. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna go catch this guy. So here's a true big old jumbo right there. You can see how big he is. That's a huge crab right there compared to another number one that's down in this bucket. And you can just see the difference of the two crabs there. And that's amazing stuff. That's the nice thing about fall crabs. They get big, they're fat, they're great to eat. So if you aren't picking, if you aren't getting crabs right now to eat, man, you're missing out. So I put a nice generous layer in there. I don't put a whole bunch of seasoning on it just because, like I said, I'm going to be picking these, so I don't need a whole bunch of seasoning. As I'm going through, I'm just making sure the ones I put in are live. Got a few deads in there today, man. This is not like Ryan. A few more deads than normal. And here's another one. Beautiful crab. Look how beautiful blue it is. But you can see right here, it's not alive anymore. I picked through its mouth to see if its mouth comes back. You know, I mess with his claws to see if they hang down. You can just see how limp that is. So, unfortunately, and just going through and putting them in. So this is a whole bushel of crabs that I'll end up steaming here. I'll probably be able to do it all in one. This one's a pretty color. Look. That's pretty neat right there. Look at this claw on it. You see that? It's almost got me. It's almost like a whiter claw than those brilliant blues. That's really neat. That's pretty cool right there. Got some crabs escaping here. Just keep myself on my toes. Oh, I see a nice and rusty one that I want to show off in a second here. Hopefully you guys can hear me all right. I'm on my AirPod speaker and got that crab noise in the background, but hopefully it's all right. Yeah, definitely a few more dead loss than I thought there would be in this bushel, but still some nice crabs in here for sure. This one's still moving around. That's a good one. I always thought it'd be neat. My wife always talks about it. So actually I'll show you this first. Go ahead and take a look at this. This is a rusty crab. You see how that crab's all rusty? This rust right here, the rust right there, man. Like that's, that's how you know that crab is going to be full of meat. Now that's not the biggest crab. It's probably about five and a quarter, or I'm sorry, five and three fourths. So it's not the biggest crab ever, but man, it's got, it's going to be packed full of meat because all this rust here means it has shed the shell in a long time. All right, let's keep rolling through them. Kind of getting to the bottom. These crabs are getting, that one's a lot. Crabs are getting a little colder too. And sometimes if you leave these crabs out, the ones I'm calling are dead. He's obviously had them in his walk-in. So they might come back to life if they were just too cold. That's another check I'll do. So I'll kind of throw them out to the side to see what happens. Some solid crabs today, Ryan. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, like this guy, he's good, maybe. All right, so here's an example of what I'm talking about, a cold crab that's still good. So if you look, I pull down his mouth and see how it just flips back real quick. That's just a crab that's cold to me. That's a crab that I would cook. Now, if I pull it and it doesn't flip back up, that's how I know it's not alive. So while I'm doing this, I got the crab pot steaming over there. And in the next few minutes, it should be nice and ready to roll. Good rolling steam, and we'll turn this around, and I'll put it in there. Um, it's going to take probably about 30, 30-ish minutes or so to steam it. So I'll probably stop the live around that point when I put them in and turn it back on, you know, about 30 minutes later, maybe a few minutes before, just so you guys can see it and tell you what I do next. And I'm not going to be able to eat all these tonight. 
I'm going to probably pick a few tonight, but otherwise, I'm going to show you, too, how you can um, – sorry, I'm watching to see if this guy's alive or not. But you see the difference there with the mouth? Yeah, that mouth is staying open. Yeah. A few more dead crabs than I thought there should be in this one, man. Okay. Looks like the rest of them look pretty lively down there. But that's kind of the name of the game with crabs too, man. Especially bigger crabs. It seems like sometimes they're a little less hardy when they get in these baskets. Maybe they just want to get in fights more. You can see this is going to be a nice bushel. Like I was saying, it's going to be a nice big bushel of crabs. And what's not going to happen tonight is I'm not picking every single one of these. So what I'll probably end up doing is picking a few just to eat them because they look good. Look how, look how rusty that one is. That's a super nice one. So I'll pick a few of them that are nice and rusty, and then I'll go ahead and um, put the rest in my, my garage fridge and then pick them through the next few days and also probably steam up a few. And I'll show you how to, I really like to reheat them as well. I know a lot of people are like, no, you never reheat them. This guy's, gonna, this guy's a little bit lighter. So you can now see the difference. So here's a white crab, white bottom crab. You can see how it's a little bit, you know, it's a lot whiter here, almost a little transparent there. Those big rusty ones, this is probably what's up some good meat in it, but those big rusty ones, they just get so dark right in here. That's how you know you got a good crab there. You can see the difference. So here's a different crab, about the same size, and just is darker throughout this whole area, especially in this tip. That's where you get to see a lot of that rust there. All right, I got about six more in there. Sprinkle some more J.O. on them. And then they'll be going in the in the pot. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you, one time I had crabs run out like that. And literally had, um, found crabs in my garage a few days later. These things, these these suckers, man, they'll, they're tough as nails. They'll last out of the water for a while. I found them in my the bilge of my boat and stuff like that too. And they'll uh, <laughs> they'll be there for a while. Yeah. Yeah. So overall, there weren't colossal giant crabs, but, you know, a bunch of solid number ones that are going to pick well. Pick up the camera in a second here, show you my dead loss so far. And we'll double check to see if they're all still dead. A little more J.O. on them. Sprinkle it all on top. I keep my J.O. in this. I actually got a 40 pound box of it and um, I vacuum seal it, actually. It makes it a lot easier to keep it. Vacuum seal it up, put it in these bins like this, and then it's just easier to sprinkle it on there. So, put it on there. And if we look over here, right on time, this pot's steaming. So, I'm going to go ahead and try to one hand the crabs and the pot and all that kind of stuff for you guys. And then we'll check out some other stuff that we got going on around here. Oh. Lighten up this real quick. Go on my phone found in the in the pot. I mean that would make a pretty cool picture, I guess, but it wouldn't be great. So it's nice boil there. Now we do not boil crabs in Maryland. So you can see the steamer that I have has these big old legs on it that'll keep it out of the water. So we don't boil them so they're nice and steamed instead. Oh, sorry. That was a heavy pot. Goes right in like that. And then lid on. And then we'll come back and check on in about 30 minutes. All right, so before I end the live, I'll go ahead and uh, show you what I got dead loss wise. We'll check them out here. It looks like three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's a maybe right there. These just seems cold. But no, it's the same thing. See how his mouth isn't closing back up? That's my test. Ten, eleven. Now, 
I'm not too upset about that. Like I've I've definitely had it where over a day or two I've lost 10, 11 crabs when I've caught bushels myself. Um, so it's not that big of a deal to me. You know, I got these at a good price just because it's a midweek special, and probably too because he caught them over the weekend, and they were probably in his walking and getting a little older. But So 11 dead. I think I got about 60 or 70 in the pot, and I think they're going to pick really well, so I'm excited to see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the live now because you're not going to want to sit here, you know, and watch this pot just steam for 30-some-odd minutes. Um, but I'll make sure I start it back up once I come up back out here and check on it. But it looks like sun's going down probably, though, so it might be a little dark. I'll have to get my, my light on. So. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Next time.